Now what I might do actually is pop this down on the ground ah, and pull it out. That's what she said. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new, very exciting episode of Cosplay Chris. And as the title for this video suggests, I've finally gotten into the world of 3D printing. I've teamed up with Elegoo who have sent me out the Elegoo Satin S Resin 3D Printer. So I'm very excited. I've been learning the software, the Chidu Box software to try and prep a file for this video. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is unboxing and assembling the resin printer itself. We're then gonna upload a file of a Robert Pattinson Batman cowl into the printer and give it a go at printing this thing and then priming it, painting it, and calling it a day. I'm very excited and I can't thank the crew over at Elegoo enough for sending me this. It comes as good time because I have wanted to get into 3D printing myself for the longest time. As you know, I've always had my good buddy Miles, I've had Benny at Benable FX and also Fact Fox in China. They have been helping out immensely when it comes to actually printing the pieces. And it's one of those things where I just had to have time to learn the software, learn how these things work, but also how regular 3D printers work, not just resin ones, but filament printing ones. Now, first off, I wanna give a massive thank you to Uncle Jesse, Henry Creations, and of course, my buddy Miles over at Flux3D for your help and your guidance when it comes to stuff like this, because resin printers can be quite tricky in terms of setting them up. Apparently, this is very user-friendly when it comes to unboxing, setting up. You just, the calibration of the plate is pretty straightforward, and I'm gonna be showing you guys that exact process. I've got my laptop here with the file of the Pattinson cowl all ready to go. And like I said, that was prepped on Chitu Box. It is a very user-friendly program. You can get the basic one or the pro one. And I had my good buddy Henry Creations help me set up this Pattinson cowl in terms of getting the support all good to go to make sure that this print cannot fail. So we've got the printer itself and we have a wash and cure machine. Now, when your resin prints are finished, you have to give them a good wash with isopropyl alcohol and let them cure with some UV light or out in the sun. Now, Elegoo also sent along some clear blue standard photopolymer resin. Usually people print in gray. It just, you can see the details a lot better, but this is gonna be quite cool to see a Batman cowl in clear blue resin. Keep in mind, when we clean the print, we're then gonna prime it, paint it, and weather it. And it just goes to show the amount of detail that this thing can print. So the Satin S is a little bit bigger than the Satin. It just means you can print bigger prints as well. All right, so first things first, we're gonna unbox this and assemble it. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, firstly, let's unbox the wash and cure machine. So like I said, when your resin prints are done, you have to give them a wash with some isopropyl alcohol and let them properly cure with some UV light or out in the sun. So first thing we see, got a nice yellow case there. Pop this bad boy out, okay. Okay, this looks very fancy. Wow, okay, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Packaging is beautiful on this thing. Okay, we've got an Allen key and some screws. Probably should read these instructions a bit. Okay, screw these guys in. All right, the curing system is now set up. So what happens when your resin print is done, you give it a bath in isopropyl alcohol and you can place it here on the UV turntable. Mind you, you can also pop the print in the sun. So the way it works is hold this button down and you can set your time. So just say, for example, we've got a print in there. We want it to let it UV cure for about two minutes. Hit the two minutes and then the turntable slowly starts turning with the UV lights. How cool is that? All right, now that that's set up, it's time to move on to the printer itself. Alrighty, here's the beast itself. I'm so excited. I'm also so nervous. I just, <laughs> I'm just paranoid that this print's gonna stuff up, but I'm in good hands with everyone that's helped me along the way. So we've got this first layer of foam. So this is what we're greeted with. Look at her. She's huge. So I believe this is the tool kit. Yep, comes with the tool kit. We've got the plate, we've got the piece that the resin goes in. We've got mask, gloves, a spatula. We've got a funnel for when we're funneling back in our resin, our excess resin that we don't end up using. We've got bolts, we've got the cables and tools as well. So if I pop that open, there we go. Perfect little starter kit right here. They've included everything, even the gloves and the mask because this resin can be quite noxious and you wanna be doing this in a well-ventilated area. That's why I opted to set it up here in the workshop and not at my apartment. It just makes more sense to have this in the workshop. Now, what I might do actually is pop this down on the ground. Ah, Pull it out, that's what she said. Okay, here we go. Oh man, this is so cool. Packaging is phenomenal. 
on this thing and also the curing machine. It's ridiculous. That off, I'll pop you there, just back there so you're safe. Oh yeah, there she is. Oh, so the build plate's here. Okay, gotcha. So we pull the build plate out. All right, one build plate. Okay, so this is where we pour the resin and you unscrew it. So I've been watching a few tutorial videos of people who have these printers. Cool, all right, I'm gonna put the build plate there. Go. All right, so we peel this off. Step one, please peel off before printing. Oh, I can feel the static on my arm. <laughs> Where the hell are the instructions? Okay, step one, take out the printer carefully, take up a plastic film, connect power cable to printer and power supply. Because ideally, I would permanently like you to chill here, sir. Okay, just want to show you guys the back. We've got the on and off switch, we've got the power, and we've got the fans here. So we're just gonna pop the power supply in. Okay, next step. Please insert the build platform, fasten the rotary knob, and loose the screws. See picture one. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna loosen these screws here. So get our little tool kit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is level the build plate. So remove the resin tank and put a leveling paper between the build platform and the 4K LCD screen and click move Z axis to zero. Put the leveling paper on the LCD, then put the build plate on the central position. Press the build plate with one hand and use another to fasten the screws. Okay, so this is our leveling paper that came in the kit. It's just a thicker piece of paper, almost like a, a cardboard. Fire up this beast, there she is, satin S, Elegoo. Oh, it's got a fan. Oh wow, look at it. It's alive. Okay, so you gotta keep clicking it up to move it up. That's all we need at the moment. I'm gonna pop that under there. Okay, now that it's been calibrated, we're just gonna move the build plate back up and pop the resin tank back in and secure that in place. Grab our resin tank, screw it down in place. Okay, so we're gonna test the UV light, so we're gonna head back home. We're gonna hit exposure. Cool, all right. If the 4K LCD screen can display a complete rectangle, then the UV lights work perfectly, and I can see a perfect rectangle. Attention, please do not stare at the LCD panel during exposure in case of visual impairment. See, because of me, now they have a warning. So the printer also comes with a mini air purifier, and that's a great little incentive. Just reduces emissions, reduces fumes of the resin, and you just pop it via USB on the side here at the back. Okay, we've got the Pattinson Cal file ready to go. So what we're gonna do is pop it on the USB that came with the printer. So this is a half scale one. Again, a massive thank you to Henry Creations for helping set this up. I did set it up myself, but I ran it through Henry beforehand because I still am getting my head around the software and where the placement of all the support structures should be. So this is essentially what the print will look like once it's done. It is even in blue, like our clear blue resin. So apparently this is gonna take 24 hours to do. And being a half scale, High def file, that totally makes sense. We're gonna pop our USB in on the side. Okay, 23 hours, 13 minutes. We're gonna drag that on the USB. Alrighty, it is time to do a print. So excited. So we've got our clear blue resin. Obviously you wanna wear your gloves, uh, mask or respirator. Just give it a quick little swirl around, just if there's any dregs at the bottom. Okay, I ended up putting most of it in there, just in case. Again, this is a pretty big file. It's a half-scale cowl. You can pause the print if you do find you're running out of resin and pour some more in, but I just don't want to take the chance. Alrighty, we're gonna pop our USB in on the side. So as you can see, we've got the cowl file there. Select that, it comes up on screen, and essentially just hit play, and the build plate will go down into the tank. So all that's left to do now is pop the UV case back on top and let it do its thing. Remember initially I said 23 hours? Scrap that. <laughs> it's actually 43 hours and 59 minutes. Holy shit. I really hope this turns out. <laughs> oh no.
So just over 44 hours later, the print is all done and dusted and it looks gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous that it was gonna fail. Originally, there is a file that comes on the USB that comes with the printer. You can do as a test. It looks like a little chest slash castle piece. I know usually you're supposed to do the test print just to make sure everything's working accordingly, but I kind of just went gun ho So I know it's usually not the best thing to do when you first get a 3D printer, let alone a resin printer. But it's a gamble I took and it, and it looks like it's paid off so far. It looks beautiful. I love the look in this uh, translucent blue. So the next step is we've got to get this thing off the print bed. So we're going to unscrew this piece here, take the print bed off. Now I've got a pan here because we're going to be using some isopropyl alcohol to gently lift it off the actual build plate. Once that's done, I'm gonna give it a bath in isopropyl alcohol by just dumping it all over the piece. And what that is gonna do is help soften up these support systems. When they're gonna grab those side cutters that came in the tool kit with the printer and remove all the support pieces. Once that's done, we can then pop it in the UV curing kit, let it do its thing, and then we can really go in and start to sand all the little nubs where the original support materials were. Then we can prime it, paint it, weather it, and call it a day. Okay, so it goes without saying, we're gonna glove up for this one because we are gonna be handling the resin as well as getting some isopropyl alcohol on our hands. So what I'm gonna be doing is spraying the ISO onto the print once we've got it there, and then we've got our scraper that came with the printer, carefully scrape it off the build plate. I'm then gonna take the top off this and just give it a nice ISO bath. Beautiful, okay, I'll give you guys a nice look at the cowl, even though it's a little bit tricky to see because of the translucency of the uh, blue printing resin, but that looks fucking stellar. Henry's done such a great job with these supports that they're so thin that they're very delicately lifting off by themselves. Obviously, with the help of uh, some isopropyl alcohol being sprayed on them. So I'm gonna remove as many as I can by hand, just very carefully. Hey, now that we've given the print time to properly cure and just set and dry off, we're gonna spray some primer filler on it. And this way we're gonna be able to see all the details and also see where we need to go in and do some sanding slash filing. I can already feel it. There is some nubs here on the back of the cow from the support material that just need to be ground down, sanded down, filed down. But once we get our first coat of primer filler on there, we'll be able to see what needs to be done before we spray it with a matte black. Also, by using primer filler, it's gonna fill in just the very subtle print lines that I can see on the forehead here, as well as the back of the cowl. Okay, can we just take a moment to appreciate the insane amount of detail that the resin printer has picked up on this file. I mean, it's got everything, even the scratches, the stitching, it's all there. So what we're gonna do is start to file around any bumps and stuff like that. Now, there is quite a few bumps on the back of the cowl here, and that was just placement of the file, and it's just one of those things where it's just, it's trial and error, you gotta figure this stuff out. So we're gonna sand this down smooth. We're probably gonna lose a bit of detail on the stitching here. Again, this is the first print right off the bat, so to speak. So we're gonna sand this down as best as we can, get rid of all these nubs, also around the mouth opening and the eyes of the cowl. Give it another coat of primer filler, and then we can move on to spraying it with a matte black, weathering it up, and calling it a day. I'm absolutely in love with this thing, geeks and geek ads. This printer is phenomenal.
After this little experience, I can honestly see why 3D printing slash resin printing is so addictive. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm so overwhelmed and over the moon with how this bad boy turned out. Granted, there are a few things to go in and tweak, but just check out all the detail that this resin printer has picked up on the cow, the leather grain, the scuffs, the battle damage, the stitching, everything, it's all there. So I was actually speaking to Uncle Jesse. He reckons we could get this print time down to about 12 hours or so instead of the 44 hour print time. Again, it was the first print right off the bat, so to speak, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out and it's my brand new addiction. I just had a new head scan of myself done recently by Miles over at Flux 3D. So I wanna have a crack at printing it scaled down in quarter scale form. Just see how that turns out and just dial in and fine tune those settings in Chudu Box. But honestly, I can't thank Elegoo enough for setting this out. It is my new addiction and it's gonna be a welcome addition to the workshop and cosplaying in general. So with that being said, guys, I'm about to start work on a brand new Pattinson face casting that I'll be doing a full video on from the 3D print. It's an actual resin print from Fact Fox over in China. The molding process with a silicon and fiberglass mold right up to a translucent resin casting, painting it, putting the eyes in, and giving him that beautiful panda eye makeup. Alongside that, I am doing a custom collectible on the McFarlane Toys statue of the Batman based off the red and black Jim Lee art. I know there is a regular version out there, but I really wanted to repaint this guy and make it as accurate as possible because I'm dealing with more detail as opposed to the seven inch figure I did a video on a couple of weeks ago. Guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.